who graduated from this organization, this USC PhD, and his wife was uh, my student at UCLA. Um, her name is Mehnaz Shahrara. She's a big professor of psychology at this time in Iran. They went back to Iran, 1980. And they said, well, we haven't done anything, you know. They went and they became professors there. She's very successful. Her husband, unfortunately, has been in prison a few times. And um, the response of the ones who went back and the ones who are here who didn't go back is that, let me tell you, they said, they, they, the comment they said is that they expected to be really the vaziers, the, the big people when they went back, or the president of universities, the hot specialists, whatever. And now they are just, you know, do having an office in Alhambra or something. And they feel that in comparison to where they expected to be, they are not quite, uh, their, their career and their life was um, um, altered a great deal. Um, I also found that there are a group of people from Los Angeles and from other places that are very active uh, in Bunyad Aine, Alcoholic Anonymous uh, Cancer Program, and they're going to Iran and they're helping Iranians in um, those programs. Um, nine of my respondents said they go to Iran for scientific conferences. <coughs> in fact, one of them had just come back from a genetic conference. Um, I told you that the, um, the, 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 a group of people, the Armenians and the Syrians have all Al Shuria and Armenia. They were always Christians in Iran. But now we have a very large group of uh, um, Iranians, especially Muslim Iranians, who have become Christians. Some of them uh, have become Christians so they can get green card. Because if you change your religion, you know, it's against uh, whatever to go back. Uh, one of the, and others have really joined a church and they find a lot of peace and, and connection there. Um, one of the attorneys here was saying that an Iranian came here and decided to become Christian in order to get his green card. So the day that they had to go to immigration office, he took this guy to immigration office and said, um, okay, now you, when they ask you about Jesus Christ, you say, yes, I'm Christian and uh, all of this. And so they went and the guy asked, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Oh, yes, yes. Do you believe in, uh, I don't know, Lutheran church, Protestant church or whatever? Oh, yes, yes, Christian church, very good. And then they said, when you got baptized, was water involved? He said, Yes, water, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, everything. <laughs> <laughs> so some of them are, are Christian at this level, <laughs> just minimal level. Anyway, so that, that's really what uh, the Jewish community in the United States is thriving and doing very well. Uh, the Jews, once they came to the United States, they had a host uh, community that welcomed them. And um, um, and also bec they became organized. They have their own Jewish synagogue. And as they said, they said, ma shenagarai khubi budin, vali ab nadide budin. They have maintained their family connection, the traditional Shab Shabbat, and the families have maintained them. The Iranian Jewish community is extremely proud of being the Iranian Jewish community uh, by that name. Um, they have, uh, you know, as you know, Homo Sasha has developed this Iranian Jewish history. We have two chairs at UCLA of Iranian. They have given money to UCLA for Iranian Jewish history. Um, there is a group of Iranian Jews who are successful executives and educated young men and women who have the, the organization called 30 Year After for the Iranian Jewish uh, young people, very active in politics. They are trying to become, <coughs> you know, city council senators, um, 
be in administrations of uh, government administration, Wall Street, and variety of other things. What's that, Chandi? Tamush. New South again. Okay, fine. Um, I can talk a long time, so you just—I just didn't know what your time was. Yes. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding earlier comments. Uh, you, see, you mentioned that uh, Los Angeles has this uh, soft culture, mm -hmm. which is true. But uh, I mean, you mentioned that your uh, survey was sent all over. What is the reason for this subculture? What is it, what is it that makes Los Angeles different than I don't know Texas or even San Francisco? You mentioned uh, what is the what what makes this subculture? Um, if you ask me, um, I'm actually very proud of our sub subculture. As I travel around the world and I see how we behave here, I really think that we have gone. We, have, we are really civilized. We are really um, a culture that um, in Los Angeles, the Iranian culture has gained, the best of the American culture has, has improved. It has a couple of reasons. You know, I, I travel a lot. I was, in, I was in eight countries this summer in Europe uh, and in contact with Iranians there. I travel with Holakui and we went to Sweden, we went to uh, London, Germany, all over the place. And um, the solidarity and um, the respect that we have for each other in Los Angeles, you don't see it in other places. I think that um, we have the beginning of democracy equality here in our community that you don't see at other places. My, uh, I have very close friends who live in Washington, D.C. When um, Team Sar so-and-so dies, when you go to his funeral, only the Team Sars are sitting there, okay? When you go to weddings, if it is an academic, it's only the academic people. You go to anything in Los Angeles, you see People of different religion, different walks of life. You go to a concert, it's the same way. I think because the events that are taking place in Los Angeles has been, you know, if you can buy a ticket for Gugush concert, you go there. It's not exclusive to a part of the society. One of the things in Europe people were complaining about Gugush concert was most of them are on fixed income. They get money from government and they can't afford buying the ticket for it. So it already, you know, it becomes a class differentiation. Um, the other thing is because we have so much minority in Los Angeles, I think that's why we have Zoroastrians and we have uh, you know, the Zoroastrian Center, we have the Baha'i Centers, we have the uh, Makaze Iman, we have uh, you know, the Jewish synagogues all over the place, we have the Assyrians, Armenians, we have large, in fact, percentage-wise, the, the Muslims in Los Angeles are a minority. Uh, in, you know, I mean, if if in Los Angeles, if in Iran is 97 percent, I think it is, is Muslim, and only three percent are minorities. In Los Angeles, you have a very large Jewish community. You have a very large Armenian, the largest Armenian community is here. Therefore, you have a community that is, um, uh, you know, uh, from variety of, uh, of groups of people. The other thing is, from beginning. We have, um, when people moved to Los Angeles, we didn't have educated people or uh, business people. Um, there are certain, like in Chicago, I gave a talk in Indianapolis. They only are university people. They don't have, um, I don't know, plumbers who is Iranian. And you know, in Los Angeles, you get yellow pages. I, I built a house a couple of years ago, and only Spanish and Persian was spoken at that site. Because I, either I hired uh, Spanish workers or Iranian subcontractors in Los Angeles. So you have a culture that can maintain itself and have respect for each other, you know? And I think that is another reason. And also, um, 
uh, it, because of the climate and the number of students who lived here before and they draw the family, uh, we drew on different segment of the society. I remember when first the revolution um, took place, the mayor of Los Angeles formed a committee for us to have the first Nowruz out of Iran, which was really difficult because people had come, they were just confused and everything else. And we had at Beverly Hilton Hotel a big Nowruz party. So we put table one, table two, table three, and then we put a little fruit and some, you know, nuts or whatever on the table. And the first group that came in, they went and got the fruit from other table and put it on their table. And they got the, the nuts on their table. And then the table three suddenly was yeah, over in front, which was table one. And it was chaos. And then they didn't have enough chair. They wanted 10 people at this, 12 people at this table. Then they, the whole place became chaotic. We had to stop the party, you know. Today, that doesn't happen. People are respectful. They stand on line. We, you know, I, I, we have gone on 43 cruises with Holakui. Every cruise we go, we have, we, first of all, thank God we have never had any problem. But people are saying, you know, they're not saying, Baba Emrika Yevelish gone. They, they are considerate of other people. They stand on line. They don't push in front of line. And I think we have not only developed a, a democracy for our own kind, but we have learned to become socially gracious, socially concerned, and socially developed in a way that uh, Los Angeles has um, done to us. Um, you also see it as far as relationship between men and women. At the beginning of revolution, we had a lot of family violence. We had a lot of beatings in the family, children, child abuse, wife abuse, husband abuse. Um, and you don't see that anymore. When after a few people went to jail, they all learned that this is not going to fly in this country. You know, So I think both having good laws, having a, being in an area that a lot of immigrants are here, and you can show yourself, and the freedom that exists in the United States <coughs> has worked. I also see the development of women in Los Angeles versus other places. That uh, women who have moved to Los Angeles have become extremely active in society. They're educated, they took courses. They have, you have no idea how many wonderful, bright, we have artists, we have musicians, we have people that are doing all sorts of things. I went to, uh, to the market and I see that it says eggplant torshi. T-U-R-S-H-I, $14, this big, you know? A friend of mine who basically just, you know, is making torshi. Beautiful label, caters to, there's a Brentwood Country Mart, right in the middle of it, expensive, expensive, expensive. She's selling that, and she's selling in. So we have really come up to a level that is to be very proud of, I think, to that, um, who we are here um, at our universities, at all the other places, we are we are doing very well. Yeah. I don't know what is what. How, do you see that, or am I really, you know? Of course, we have a lot of people in jail too. You know, I've been there many times. We have a lot of Iranians in jail. Yes. We have. Uh, I go. I, I do defense in court for Iran for Iranians. And then we have had murderers. I've defended murderers. I've had defended a man who killed his wife. And I got him off because I thought he, were, he had the right to kill her. <laughs> uh, not the right to kill her. I, I mean, she was, she really, he was really abused, and he really flipped out. We have a lot of, we, for a while, we had kids that said, I'm going to blow my school or something like that as a joke. And then they ended up in jail. A lot of drugs. Um, Cheating, stealing, all of that. Yeah. I'm just curious, what is the major? What is the major one? What is the major? Major crime. Yeah. Major crime is drugs. Drugs. Um, um, drunk driving, drugs, and still abuse is high. 